A man who lost his wife in the terrorist attacks of 9-11 talks about coping six months after. The family of an Army helicopter pilot killed in the war on terrorism speaks about his sudden death and love of country. I'm Kim Dillon. That story's coming up. Plus, could there be a UC Xavier matchup in the big dance? The latest on Selection Sunday, next on 12 News. You're watching 12 WKRC-TV, a new generation of news. Now, non-stop news and Lane Mason's no-wait weather. 12 News at 11 starts now. Six months really, at least you know, speaking for our family, is not very long. It doesn't feel like a half a year. It feels, it feels like a few weeks. It feels it's all still very fresh. And... The day America was attacked was the day this family started coping with loss. And tonight, the reaction to the 9-11 film you just watched, the day that changed their lives and all of ours. Good evening, I'm Paula Todi. The numbers stand out six months later, and they will for years to come. Numbers like 9-11, 3,000 dead. Behind those numbers are families coping with the loss. 12 News reporter Paul Adler spent the evening with one of those families. He joins us live in the studio. Paul? Paula Lynn Faulkner says 9-11 is the day his wife was murdered. It's the day 20 years of married life came to an abrupt end. Lynn's wife, Wendy, was on the 104th floor of the second World Trade Center building. Are, are irreparably changed. We've all seen them, the moving pictures of 9-11. The images that stick, images that aren't banished from Lynn Faulkner's home. There's a newspaper, a book, a magazine. You don't get away from it. It's, it's, it's wherever you go. It's part, of, it's part of our history now. Lynn's wife, Wendy, was in New York for a meeting on 9-11. She never came home. Her meal plans still on the refrigerator. I, I still smile when I see them. They were, uh, you know, sort of uh, another uh, tangible evidence of the fact that she really cared a lot and worked real hard to try to take care of us. Lynn and his two teenage daughters are trying to move on, trying to hold on to each other. We have to do these little checks on each other once in a while. And it just happened to be at lunch today. We did one of those. It was kind of like, how do you think we're doing? Well, I think we're doing pretty good. How do you think we're doing? Well, I think we're doing pretty good. And I'm not sure whether we're actually reporting to each other whether we're reassuring each other. I suspect it's a little both. Every day, though, there's some reminder. It's simple stuff. A button fell off. And uh, my wife, the seamstress, would have sewn that patch in probably in a couple of seconds, and I've struggled all day long. Moving on is a process, and six months is not long enough for Lynn. In his study, there are boxes sent from his wife's office unopened. And the documentary on 9-11 that he will tape but may not watch. I guess only time will tell how I and probably everyone reacts to these sort of things. But it is, you know, I've talked to some other victims' families. I think there are some weird differences just in the, in the, in the, in the way this thing is and the fact that it's, it's tied to this historical event that launched us into a war and the fact that most of us have never received the remains of our loved ones back. It sort of left this thing as a sort of an endlessly open Sore. Tonight, Lynn Faulkner's decision on when to watch that documentary is something he's keeping to himself. Meantime, he set up a fund to aid the children from third world countries that his wife helped. If you'd like to know more about the project, check out windyfoundation.org. Paula? Paul, what has his response been to America's response since that day, the war, for instance? He's very patriotic. He says what happened on 9-11 is what sparked this war and he feels for the families who recently lost loved ones in the fight against terrorism. All right, thank you, Paul. Two memorials will mark the six-month anniversary. The first, a restoration of the sphere that sat in front of the World Trade Center. It will be placed in a park across from where the building stood. The other memorial, at dusk, twin beams of light will shoot a mile up into the Manhattan sky. The tribute in light will shine for 32 straight nights. Selection Sunday brings March Madness, and we now know where UC and Xavier will have landed in the upcoming NCAAs, and it's possible <laughs> Whoa, that everything's Everybody's going Everybody's excited. Mad. There's all kinds of stuff going it's on. It's possible they're going to meet. They're yeah, meet, maybe. yeah, out west it would happen. But first, they got to each win three games. Both UC and Xavier, they're coming off yesterday's conference tournament championship wins, 
and tonight both are rewarded by the NCAA selection committee. They land in the West Regional. Now, let's take a look as the Bearcats are the number one seed out West. They'll open against Boston University Friday. That'll be at Mellon Arena in Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, the Musketeers are the seventh seed out West. They'll face Hawaii in their opener Friday at American Airlines Center in Dallas. I think we got a, a, a good seed. I mean, seven, you know, you, you, you're now at the point where you take what they give you, and uh, there's not a whole lot you can do whether you like it or not. 